Hi everybody, this is Greg Harding from Greg Harding Photography. Um, thanks for joining us uh, on the blog today. And um, today I'm going to look at the uh, sort of kit that I normally carry out on a you know, general assignment. So um, we're looking, this is the bag I usually take out. It's the Think Tank International version 2. And uh, on the inside of the front pocket, um, with the laptop. Uh, I don't always take that, but um, it slides in there nicely. The, um, on the inside of the um, front compartment here, we've got a uh, zip lock. The nice features uh, within the sort of um, the think tank uh, is, you know, they've got loads of security features in there. If you, you're out and about, then, you know, you can tether it to items, you know, lock it in place. Uh, if we just look at the, out, the outside of it for a second, um, just around the back. On um, this bag's been around a little bit, so it's been a bit beat up, but it's still 100% um, you know, working, and all the wheels are fantastic, and the, all the handles and stuff on the outside they all zip in, so it makes it makes carrying all your stuff around very easy. Um, security feature again, you know, you've got this heavy um, wire that you can then whip around and um, either you know tether to posts and stuff. Um, and also sending your kit out, yeah, out and about in air, you know, in airplanes and things. It's really, um, you know, it's, it's, there's a good safety features with it. You've got some zip lock, you know, um, zips come around to the sides and then lock in place. Um, so you know, you're not going to get people stealing your stuff. So um, on the inside, um, not that you can see too well. Let me just chill that around. Um, on the inside of this, you can see, I've norm normally got a couple of bodies, but I'm recording with one of them. Um, we've got, if I just pop that down for a second, uh, one of the straps I tend to use is the Sun Sniper. Uh, there's another one called the, uh, I think it's called the Black Rapid, um, that's very similar, but this is a, like an over-shoulder strap, and they're very, very comfortable rather than the normal neck straps that sort of drag your neck down and give you some pain at the back there. This one goes across and distributes the, the weight of the uh, camera across the body and, and hangs really nicely on the, um, on the hip. And so that's, that's a really good investment for anybody that has to um, uh, carry cameras around on a regular basis and for long periods of time. Um, so, uh, looking at bits of kit, we have the um, 5D Mark III, I've got a couple of those bodies. Um, they're really solid workhorses, never had any problems with them so far, touch wood. Um, we've got the 70-200 2.8L, um, really, you know, again, that's uh, been a super lens for me. Um, you know, it's, it's worth every penny of the... Was it 1500 pounds, I suppose? Um, and that just sneaks in there. Uh, I've got a little 1.4 extender uh, for it for if I'm shooting sort of cars or you know, just want to get a little bit closer to things, um, especially on sort of um, uh, in construction sites where people are up, uh, up high, you know, you need to get that little extra distance. And the um, one thing to note that the 1.4 extender only really works with the white lenses, so. Um, uh, so it converts the one point, uh, the 70 to 200 into something like, uh, you know, you'll get an extra you know, 1.4 on it. So what, 300 mil, something like that. Um, uh, what else is in here? Uh, along with the laptop, the, um, uh, I tend to carry around the uh, Lacey Rugged Drive. I think it's a uh, two terabyte or a one terabyte drive. Um, just for storing stuff onto. It's got the um, firewire connectors, but also the sort of USB 3 if you want it. Um, the, um, the ruggeds are really good. Uh, they're sort of drop tested up to two meters, I think it is. So, you know, if you're looking for a solution where you, know, you can port it around and not worry too much, you know, I'd still not want to throw this on the floor, but, you know, if it accidentally got uh, knocked off a table or something like that, it wouldn't be the end of all your data that's stored on it, so it's bear, worth bearing in mind. Um, other lenses, uh, the 70 to full, uh, 17 to 40, 
um, what's this, the F4L, um, complete with the little lens hood. Um, that comes around with me. Um, the, uh, my sort of go-to lens uh, is the 24105, um, the F4L, um, super lens, um, really nicely marries up with the uh, 5Ds. It gives you some, uh, you know, if you're only going to take one lens with you, it's probably a 24105. Um, I think, um, you know, at some stage I'm probably going to invest in the 2470, the, the 2.8, which give me a, a little extra speed. Um, but other than that, you know, the, I've been very, very happy with the uh, 24105. Uh, what else is in here? So for sometimes with um, medical legal stuff or the um, uh, or even just sort of just general close-ups and and uh, you know portraits, the um, the uh, hundred mil macro is a super lens. Um, it's a very very sharp. It's two eight prime. You know it's it's um, it's just an all round really sharp good quality lens and especially I mean people don't tend to think of macros for portraiture but for the 100mm um, you know, makes it a really nice focal lens to use um, right what else we're we looking at so uh, here's my Conic um, it's the uh, the L358 this you know if you're only going to buy one meter buy a Sconic, um because they are just all round solid, uh, dependable um, bits of kit. This particular one, I think you can put in like a little, you can put in a remote for, you know, uh, triggering the um, pocket wizards, things like that. So, um, although I've not, I've not invested in that particularly, um, just because, you know, you can trigger them and read off the meter. Um, I don't go anywhere without that, you know, this, lives with me it's it's something i depend on um the metering systems on the 5d and the 5d you know the 5d range uh, are very good um but when you're thinking about flash um an external flash you really need something dependable so um and i know a lot of photographers get away with just sort of knowing their kit really nicely um and you know to a certain extent i can put up a light and kind of know roughly what it's going to give me but you know, if you really want to nail down to a third of a stop, you know, then you need a decent meter to do that. Uh, tend to carry around little speed lights. So these these are actually the 580 EXs. I know there's a there's 580 EX2s now. Um, they're super expensive, um, but these do me for you know 90 percent of the work I do. Um, you know, I carry around the Ellen Crom Quadras packs um, if I need a little bit extra punch or if I'm going outside and I know I need to light outside. You know, the speed lights really aren't going to give you enough. It doesn't pack enough wallop um, to overpower the sun or, you know, an, an external ambient source. So, um, but yeah, the, the internally, the um, speed lights in conjunction with sort of radio slaves um, can work really nicely for you. Um, what else is in here that you kind of need to know about? Not much. Um, you know, we've got various filters, um, neutral gradients, uh, lens cleaning kits, um, you know, uh, dust um, pickers, a um, you know, variety of uh, batteries. And um, you know replacement batteries for the five Ds, um, little extension cords for um, uh, f uh, forgetting it, uh, forgetting the speed lights off camera um, and away. Um, in the pockets, uh, we've got you know various um, know, like business cards. You know, you should always take some business cards with you. Um, cables for um, remote uh, uh, release um, via pocket wizards or similar. Um, there's little infrared triggers uh, for you know remotely triggering the cameras. Um, you know, 
very rarely use those, but they're the cheapest chips on the, on eBay, so get yourself some. But um, so that kind of brings us around to cards, I suppose. So um, this is a um, card case. I needed something that's that was sort of waterproof uh, and you know, rugged enough, so if you dropped it, it wasn't going to smash. Um, these take um, a mixture of you know, CFs and SD cards. Um, and I think that's about us. So, yeah, that's kind of what I take around in the bag any one time. Um, that's sort of 90% of the work I would do. Um, you know, I tend to shoot mainly with um, ambient light or, you know, ambient with a tiny amount of flash just to sort of clean the shadows up a little bit. Um, the, you know, DSLRs these days are very, very good at um, running at higher ISOs. Um, sort of, so I generally, if I'm working inside, probably I'm going to start at around 2000 ISO, I would think. Um, and then I've got a workable hand-holding um, you know, solution. Um, and if I need to fill in shadows and things, then I you know, uh, crank out the, um, the speed lines. So and when you, you, know, you can reuse those remotely on the ETTL system. Or indeed, you know, trigger them normally and set them to manual. But um, so, thanks for joining us here. I hope that's been informative. Um, and um, you know, check back soon for more details about what I do and where I do it. So, thanks very much, and I'll see see you again.